Hi, my name is Ross Gibson, and I'm here to talk about the new SRV record support and DNS traffic control and an example of how to use that. So a little bit of information about the record support. Uh, it's been added in NIOS 8.3, um, and you configure the SRV records within a DTC server object. So you have to create the server object first and then drill into it in order to add the SRV record, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. And when you're creating the record, you can create it freeform or you can use the uh, the GUI to put it in an RFC 2782 format as well. So here's the example use case that we're going to build this out for and show in the example. So what we're what we're looking at here is in most Active Directory environments, there's a record, the underscore GC dot underscore TCP record that's used by clients to identify what domain controller to use for authentication. Um, but as there are certain pieces of software that are used for allowing non-Windows clients to authenticate against a domain, some of them are not site aware. Um, in a typical AD environment, once a client talks to an AD controller, it will find out what site it's a member of, and then it can actually do queries for site-specific listings of services. But certain clients are not site-aware, and there are certain situations where an administrator may want to provide site-specific answers to clients that are not otherwise site-aware. And with DTC, you actually can use the client source to hand back specific SRV records to the client. So to run through the sample impl implementation that we'll show in a minute, given a DNS zone supporting the AD domain of ds.example.com, clients would look up the record for underscore gc dot underscore tcp within that zone to find the domain controllers. We have two DTC servers built for the SRV records. One returns win 2012 R2, and the other returns win 2012 R2 int 2. We've got two pools built, one containing each DTC server. Uh, the pool could contain more servers um, if you had multiples to hand out, or it could actually cross-populate the two and use global availability to give an ordered list so that you could have a site preferred answer first, but if that's not available, then fall back to another answer. In this case, we're going to use a topology rule set to determine which pool to return the answers from. So I'll have two different clients that I'm sending queries from to demonstrate how one client will get one answer and another client will get a different answer. All right, so now we'll actually take a look at the GUI and show how this SRV record support is built out to emulate the two different GCs, and then we'll show an example of it actually functioning. So as I mentioned before, you've got to build out your DTC servers ahead of time, and then once you've built them, you actually click on the name of the DTC server to drill in and add the SRV record. In this case, you would just add an SRV record, and then you'd add in all the different pieces of information that you need to. Here, I've already got it built out. This one's pointing to the Win 2012 R2. And then we have the other pointing to Win 2012 R2 int 2. We then have a pool for each of them. And each of them basically just are using, in this case, an ICMP health check. But we've got one pool member in each. Load balancing method, method is global availability. For this use case, it actually doesn't matter here because we're not making the decision at the pool level. Um, that's why everything's just set at global availability. And then at the load balance domain name level, we're actually using a topology answer. Um, and I'll show you this topology rule set in a second. We've matched it up with ds.example.com, providing SRV record answers. 
we've got both pools selected. So within the rule set here, we're using extensible attribute rules, such that if you're in the home internal network, you'll get one answer. And if you're in, not in that network, then you'll get the other answer. So I'll bring up the test capability to show you how in this network it will provide answers, and then I'll switch over to a command prompt to show it truly in action. So coming from one client that's in the outer network or not in the internal network, when you look this up, you'll get the answer pointing to the dash int2 version. But if you source the query from an internal network client, then the answer is the other interface. And just to show that it's truly happening in action, so here's my client in the 192.168.80 subnet. And when I look it up there, I see the Win 2012 R2, just as we showed here in the test. And when I switch over to the other client in the 192.168.1 1 network, and it looks up the same record, it gets the response with the dash into two response. And that's how you can utilize DTC SRV record support to provide topology-based answers to clients for underscore GC dot underscore TCP records. Thank you very much. So if you want to try DTC for yourself, uh, it's, it's pretty easy. If you are a current Infolox customer, uh, you can go to the command line on, on an existing appliance, use the set temp license, uh, and select DNS traffic control from the menu, which will grant you a 60-day license to test it out. And if you're not yet using Infolox, contact your local account team and, and your sales engineer can assist you with getting an appliance set up and getting the licensing on it to test it out. And if you're not sure who your account team is, you can contact info at infoblocks.com or you can call 1-408-986-4000. Thank you very much.